So, good afternoon, everyone. So, today's topics is related to nonconformities, right? And to detect them and then manage it, right? In terms of what you can do with them once you put that into the into the system itself. A little bit about myself. I uh, I work for Visual K. We're partnered with Hexagon. Been working in EAM for about 12 years now. So we've implemented, we've given support, we have developed, integrated with other systems. So pretty much we've done many, many things with the software itself. Customize it uh, in terms of other usage that a person might, might need, right? So looking at the topic of today, uh, nonconformities. What's that about, right? Nonconformities, right? And it says, when you track nonconformities, which are basically anomalies, you want to be make sure that you capture it, right? And you kind of observe it throughout time, right? So for instance, you have a crack in a concrete a foundation, right? You probably don't want to immediately go at it, right, and try to fix it. Because probably it's going to take you time, it's going to take you money, right? There's a lot of efforts, and on the downside, it might affect your production, for instance, right? But what you want to do is basically observe, right? Make sure how, or capture the data in terms of how that crack keeps growing and growing, right? And practically kind of prepare yourself to attend that situation. So once if you detect a nonconformity, then basically the system will allow you to monitor, right? Because you're capturing data, there are data points, things that you want to make sure that you're able to put down into a database, into a system, and then from there do reporting, do trendings, right? So nonconformities can be observed can be visual, or it can be actual measurements that you want to make sure that out there, that are in the system, where you can prepare, right, and plan work ahead based on those observations. Throughout the presentation, you're going to see a lot of screenshots, right? And what I, what I put over here, it's, it's one way to use nonconformities. Because if you have entered into the module, which is basically standard, there are a lot of fields there. There are things that you can tie it up your parts, your material types. There are things that you can, uh, you can practically make it very complex or you can make it very general, right? So what you're going to be seeing are observations or nonconformities based on, for example, patrols, inspections, or line, in, or, yeah, uh, line inspections on the uh, transmission side of a business, right? But the idea is the same, right? How you want to configure it, the sky's the limit, right? There are many multiple ways that you can use it. It's how you use it that you can make it easy for the person who are actually capturing the data, right? That's what practically it's gonna make it work for you. If you've gone through the hexagon side, they have this humongous workflow, right? In terms of let's say all the capabilities, all, right? all the things that you probably can do uh, with the nonconformity. But it's up to you how you want to make sure that, how you want to make it, to make it again, easy to use, right? And basically capture the data. Because at the end, that's basically where you, where you want to, right? Be able to capture the data and then analyze it and act upon it. So in terms of configuration, key stuff, right? And, and again, these are related to this example, right? So we have aspects, we have severities, right? Definitions of it. Uh, we have checklists, right? How we're gonna capture those observations, right? And then some nonconformity types, right? And we're gonna see all of that uh, in the next slides and how those connect with the, with the task plan, again. Because from that task plan, either you can do a PM to do that inspection, right, uh, with the frequency, or you can have an actual work order open and then just add that activity in there as well. So it doesn't stop you from one way or, the, or another to use it. It's just how you how your process define how you're gonna do those uh, inspections out there. So for example, severities, these are typically configured in the system codes in the EAM software. 
Uh, and here you define the different types of severities, right? It can be serious, uh, it can be very visual, uh, severe, abnormal condition, right? Uh, critical. It's how you want to assess, right? Those narcophilia when you are actually going to do that checklist, right? Those are going to be your, your drop downs, right? The things that you want the people to select, right? Cannot be open, right? You cannot just let it them put it in there. Because free text, it, it doesn't work when you want to report on, on it, right? You want to make sure, you want to standardize the way that the people are capturing the, the information, right? And that is one way. It doesn't mean that it has to be the same for everything, right? You can have different types of severities out there. And based on that, you're gonna associate those to the different uh, checklist items that you need. So for example, in these ones, we have 50 out there. And it can exist more, right? It depends on how you are assessing each of those inspections. Then you have nonconformity types. And basically, here is how you characterize your nonconformity, right? So for example, thermographic, A, B, C, D. Uh, and if you see over there, nonconformity type details, there's a severity associated to it, right? So there is already a connection with your nonconformity type and your severity, right? So there is kind of a one-to-one -one relation. If they select that, then from there they select the actual nonconformity type during the checklist uh, process. So here again, you basically define, and again, it's, it's gonna be based on how you are assessing that aspect that you want to measure, right? So depend on that is how we're gonna see those available, right, and associated to the different areas. It can be general, we can associate a task plan to it, it can be a classified, you can define that, so, uh, with a standard work order as, as well. So many different ways that you can configure it uh, so that it gives you the output that you're looking for. Aspects, okay. So on the aspects, basically you have, if you do remember in terms of checklists, uh, you have your aspects, point types, right? Uh, all of those uh, criteria is there. So one of those in the aspects, and you're gonna see that based on that aspect that I define, then I would have, for example, collector shoe defects, right? And then I have a nonconformity, and I associate all the different nonconformity types to that aspect. So that way, again, standardizing, right? You want the people to be able to select the things that you want to make sure, right? It doesn't mean that it's gonna change over time, right? As time passes, you typically will uh, update it, right? Into, into new terms. But you want to make sure that you have that part uh, standardized. And then once you have that nonconformity type, you also can input, for example, tolerances, right? Because if you have a measurement and it's within a value or outside the value, apologies, then it can trigger an unconformity out immediately, right? So that depending on what the mechanic, the technician, someone who's actually capturing the measurement at that point, it's gonna be inputting that value, then the system will say, oh, is it outside my range? Yes nonconformity out there, right? And then from there you kind of manage it. And again, several options over here, right? Create nonconformity, right? Severities and the association of the uh, nonconformity. And then you have the task plan, right? Which is basically where you're kind of mixing everything in there, right? And again, task plans are more for your PM, your frequency, how you want to engage the people to go out there and capture that uh, value for that and see if it's an unconformity or not. And then you have, within that task plan, then you have the different checklists, right? And over here, if, if you see type, nonconformity check, right? It can be a nonconformity check or it can be a nonconformity measurement, right? Depending on what 
what is it that you want to capture, right? So how you can figure it over here is how the person, right, is going to be seeing it through the computer, through a mobile device, right? Anything that they use to do the actual uh, execution of the job, right? So a couple things, right? You have the different checklists, right? There's a little button over here, enable nonconformities. Very important. If you don't mark it, then you won't be able to select, for example, the nonconformity type. Mm -hmm. It's going to override it. It's going to be, you're not going to be able to use it completely. Typically, it's hidden. <laughs> you have to hide it because it's, uh, it's, it's there, but uh, it's not, it doesn't come with the standard uh, layout of the screen. But again, with that in mind, and if you have used checklist before, then you can have a route, right? Or you can specify that for a specific class, right? So if you have several things that you are capturing, and there are different types of equipment that you're going through, then you can uh, practically define which checklist goes to which equipment, right? So that the person, when they reach that one, they're going to see a whole 90 item, uh, items to entry, right? They're going to see what it's specifically for that equipment, right? And you can group it. There's an option to group the nonconformity. So there's several ways that you can employ. Uh, and, and again, to make it easy to use for the people, right? Because, I mean, this one has 29 for, you know, records there, right? I've seen uh, on a line patrol that has <laughs> almost 200 of them. So when you have a person looking at all of that and, sc and scrolling through it, uh, they become a little bit frustrated. One of, the thing, one of the aspects that you have to take into consideration is put yourself in, into those shoes, right? How can you make it easy to use uh, so that the process runs, right? Because you don't want to stall, right? You want them to keep going at it and making sure they capture correct data out there. So that is basic, uh, basic configuration, right? So we went through aspects, uh, uh, nonconformity types, the setup of it, uh, task plans, right? Basic information that you need to fill in, right? Typically, it's the one that takes more time because of the way that you, or the, not the way, but the things that you want to capture in there. So that can be very long. It can be very small. It can be updated as time passes. So that type of information, it's uh, pretty much very important to have it uh, up to date. And again, you also need PM. So you have the task plan as to a PM so that it, or at least some type of a frequency work order so that it runs through and you know when the people need to engage the actual uh, check. And then there's other processes that are involved there. For example, planning, right? Scheduling of it. When are they gonna, when are they gonna be doing that out, okay? So other, other processes are also in the mix but kind of implied into it, into, into the use of it. So the next slides that you're gonna see are more on how to use, right, once you have it set up. Uh, typically, you're gonna see more of a mobile setup. I, I think that's uh, one of the best way to go. Uh, but you're gonna see also the screen within the EAM uh, desktop side. So typically, if you're in your mobile, right, you will be able to capture uh, your different uh, work orders, the ones that are assigned to you. That's typical EAM. Uh, in this case, you see there's detail patrol, there's substation inspections. In terms of that, once you select your work order, then basically you go through the process of selecting your activity, right? Once you have it, right, then your actual checklist will appear over here, right? And these are the areas where you can group your actual entries so that you can, if you have 200 entries, then try to make it as easy to use as possible, right? You select your entry, and then from there, uh, then you have your, your 
uh, if it's okay or if it's a nonconformity to select a ring, right? And then selecting the nonconformity type, right? And then you have notes. You can capture an actual photo of it using the mobile device, and you can document that into there. And basically, if you need to create follow-ups, right, or is it is a final occurrence, right? Because probably there might be an inspection that you have to do it every 30 minutes, right? So you have the checklist set up so that it continues to gather that data. And once you are done with it, then you click your final occurrence of it. With that, you set a your non conformity type. So see how, how you define it and how you associate that to your aspect then those are the options that you're gonna be selecting from it. And then you go and you move uh, uh, to the different ones that you want to capture, right? So for example, this one, infirmity, uh, straps are deteriorated, final occurrence, and that's it, right? What happens on the software side, right? Then you have, you have your, work, your work order, right? And then you have similar ways to see those checklists. Right? The ones that were set with uh, the nonconformity, the severity associated to it, and the different aspects at the end of, the, of it. So that, that's how you capture that initial uh, nonconformity check. But after that, there are several places that you can go and see those associations, right? So for example, you're gonna see that on the work order, you're gonna see the different observations, right? There's a tab to look at those, right? And see, where were, which are the ones open, which are the ones that are assigned or not, okay? So automatically when that nonconformity gets created, it will go to that status of open, on assign, unless you change it, right? Unless you define it different in your workflow. Or you can go to the actual nonconformity screen, right? And from there, again, the same approach, right? You have the information, you have document, documents, you can attach to it, as always see the observations regarding to that. And then you have your status, right? Where you can see if it's open on a sign, open a sign, and finally close once the, uh, the nonconformity is kind of closed down, right? In terms of, of the investigation, in terms of the review of it. Okay. And from there, basically for each of those, you can create a work order or you can have multiples of them and associated to a one work order. So it depends on, on different checks, right? If it's different equipments, then totally you're gonna have different uh, work orders to manage them. On the nonconformity side, right? The different actions to use them. And then you can update the status of that nonconformity, or you can add a nonconformity to that same work order. And then basically, once you update, you can either close it or assign it right from the mobile device, right? So that's why we tend to focus this type of uh, detection through that mobile device because, I mean, it's kind of the best way for the equipment needed for the person to capture those uh, observations uh, through that mobile application out there. Uh, and basically, you document it and then you go back to the computer and type it in, it's, it's typically more of, a, of doing that through the mobile application, right? And then from there, the changes that you do, uh, basically you can update status of them for all of the other conformities within that same work order, or if you have different work orders then you have to go through each one of them to make the necessary changes to it. Well, in this case, once you have it, you can always have other uh, nonconformities added to that work order, right? So you, if you plan to set up the next schedule, then basically uh, over here you can use that same one to do those checks initially. So again, with one work order you can do many things uh, and be able to capture the data uh, intended for. So in terms of, of the usage, right, once, as you see, you configure the application to capture that type of data. Uh, you manage it, right, because you use the tool, right, work orders to go at it and capture those nonconformities, right? And once you capture that nonconformity, what are you gonna do with them, right? 
basically you create a new work order to attend, right? And not necessarily you have to create a work order, right? If you see it previously, you can say, well, it's within the range for now. I'm just going to close it. But I do have my history there, right? I do have my observation regarding that specific nonconformity check, right? And from there, you can do tons of things, right? You can do reporting. You can do automatic monthly reports coming out of the system to tell you, well, these are the ones that were fine. Uh, these ones were closed. These ones are open, right? You can build your inbox, your KPIs from that data that you've captured, right? Or if you're looking to someone specifically, you can do reports to do some trendings, right? For example, uh, temperature changes, right, across X amount of time, right? You can use that data because it's already in the system and then build your reports to show that trending. The main thing over here is be able to capture that out, right? And using nonconformity, it's one way to go. Initially, when the, when the checklist came out in the EAM software, uh, it was very basic, right? You can do visual inspections, you can do uh, uh, values, uh, yeah, that sort of uh, kind of work there. But once they introduce that nonconformity, practically you can take that typical general inspection and change it to something that can drive data into the system, right? And have someone to look at it and make sure that you are able to capture that information and up, act, on, act up on it, right? Make sure that it's, uh, it's gonna tell you a story, right? How things are behaving, how things are working, what things you might need to do in the future, right? Or prepare yourself if you need to do some drastic changes, right? Because you don't want those uh, anomalies to affect your operation, right? You want to deal with them when the time comes, but not necessarily run out unless they are absolutely, <laughs> uh, you need to run to them. But it will, it will continue to record those observations. So for example, one customer that we had, the first thing that they said that it wasn't working, right? Because they were not able to close it out. And when you look at it, you say, well, there's a little checkbox. And you need to click on it, right? To make sure, to tell the system, yeah, that's, that's it. It's the final one. Uh, now you can close it. But if you don't tell that, or if you are not used to the process, then it's going to be popping up again and again and again. So it will automatically do it. Uh, but again, based on how you configure that uh, checklist item. And there is an actual, on the equipment uh, screen, there's a tab for nonconformity. So there again, you see the history. So there's tons of places where you can drill down into that data and build your reports, your KPIs, your inboxes, right? Because it, everything's tied up, not only to the work order, but to that equipment, right? Which is kind of on top of everything. Well, that's it then. Thank you.